another thing about the boots, um, the purchases, you know, we the, the part of our is getting steel toed boots when they start on the job. Um, and writing that as allow allowable, I know that wasn't in the findings, but it's been circulated around as um, people asking questions. Yeah, when you go to the regulations for youth build at 20 CFR Part 672, you'll find that personal protective equipment is required to be provided for youth build participants. So it is an allowable, it is an allowable supply expense for a youth bill grant program to purchase personal protective equipment in order to ensure that the youth meet uh, or the work site and the youth that are working on it meets OSHA standards for safety. Okay. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else you guys want to ask? So we have basically a year after we get this letter out to try to um, fix or, you know, send you the documentation. Right. And similar to what we're doing right now, I mean, my role as the federal project officer is to work with you to address any questions or concerns or, um, you know, guidance that you need as far as technical assistance in order to respond to the items identified in the monitoring report. So at no point should you feel like you don't know what's required, you don't know what's being requested, or you don't understand what you're supposed to do in order to be timely in providing a response. Because at that point, you know, we should be picking up the phone like we're doing right, right now, or sending an email, or requesting clarification, you know, so on and so forth. So that's my okay. my role, my responsibility, and my commitment to you so that you're not sitting there thinking, well, we don't know what we need to do, so we're going to sit and wait. You know, right. so that you don't get down to the deadline. I mean, our hope is to work, you know, effectively and and efficiently so that we can get these things, you know, closed out and resolved ahead of time. And one, one more thing is um, the monitoring review itself. There's mm -hmm. been taught suggestions of because Youth Build was in trouble or um, the feds are coming because there's a lot of stuff wrongness going on uh, can you kind no, of so i mean let me clarify that issue once and for all i mean I, I i'm not sure why there's confusion about this or why there's hints and allegations about how we do monitoring i mean i'm i'm the individual that was there monitoring and i can tell you as the representative of the department of labor that we monitor all let me repeat that we monitor all of our discretionary competitively awarded grants the monitoring activity that myself and my colleague Dominique Bell conducted while we were on site there is exactly the same monitoring that each and every one of our grants receives it has nothing to do with the grants performance it has nothing to do with grant expenditures it has nothing to do with any concerns questions or issues that the department or others may have about the grant program itself it's normal and customary and it's something that we do with all of our grants so the decision to monitor the grant program you know when it was monitored and how it was monitored we follow a standard monitoring pr procedure that's identified in our core monitoring guide which I which I transmitted in advance of the monitoring activity it's available for anyone who wants to look at it and that's the same monitoring guide that we use for each and every review that we do you know, if a grant is found to be at risk, then we may do additional monitoring, but that was not the reason why this grant was specifically monitored. This is the normal and customary monitoring that we do for each and every one of our grants. Okay, that clears that up. Thank you so much, Derek. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Mean, yeah, because a lot of, there's been a lot of allegations when the first monitoring that we were in all trouble and everything's going a wire, and I know you addressed the council at the closeout and said the same thing, but I almost feel like we have to repeat it again mm -hmm. because... Well, and the other thing, too, is, like, what's in the monitoring report is what's in the monitoring report. You know, if DOL is going on the record, as the federal funder is saying, our monitor conducted a monitoring review of the grant on set dates, and here's what was there, and here, or here's who was there, here's who our representative was, and here's what they looked at when they were there, and here's what they observed in terms of compliance issues and or areas of concern, and we're putting it in a formal record for you because we're requesting that you respond to it, you know, as such. And just like any independent auditor will do, they'll I'll also make a statement, a conditional statement about, you know, we are not perfect. We may not have observed things that, you know, may be issues. Um, this is not an absolute uh, report in the context of there may be other things that we didn't observe when we were there. But if we didn't say something about it in this report, it's generally acceptable to us. Uh, but there may be things that we didn't observe that 
um, either aren't compliant or are concerns, but obviously that's an internal issue that uh, the grantee organization, you know, needs to be cognizant of its responsibilities and affecting and actively ensuring that its responsibilities are being met. But if something's an issue for us, I mean, there's no, like, secret set of issues that exist somewhere outside of that monitoring report. So the monitoring report is what it is, you know, and what we're concerned about and what we're, you know, kind of putting a grantee on notice about, so to speak, is what's, you know, specifically identified in the monitoring report. You know, I know there's been questions and concerns kind of like what was addressed in this conversation about, well, what are the implications of this, that, or the other thing? Well, anytime there's any questions about that, my, you know, direct kind of advice about that would be to call me. I mean, I will tell you very specifically, and if I'm not being clear, you know, then tell me, we, you know, you're not being clear or we don't understand what it is that you're saying, and, and I will clarify the issue. So, you yeah. know, I, I want to make sure that all of the responsible party stakeholders, you know, from the tribal president's office all the way down in terms of the tribe's governance structure and administrative structure, that you have the information that you need in order to make informed decisions. You know, Gary, I don't want you um, to... Chuck has to leave. So okay. he's getting ready to head to an appointment. Yeah, he's okay. going to go to his doctor's appointment. So. All right. Well, that, that's pretty much, I mean, that's it. That's my spiel. So is there any? are there any other questions or concerns that you guys have before Chuck has to leave? Um, I don't think so. That, I, I'm sure there may be more, but that, you know, we can always at a later time talk to you if we think of other things. But there were real specific ones. Okay. And, I mean, while Chuck is still in the room, it was the request from the president that I speak only with council members on issues relevant to the grant. So I just want to make sure that everyone is aware that I'm honoring that request from the chair or from the president's office that on issues related to this grant, I'm only uh, supposed to be or I've been requested to speak only to council members. So... I'm just putting that information out there, so if someone is not a duly elected member of the council and wants to discuss something about the grant, that it needs to come through a council member or, you know, as authorized or appropriate. So all youth build staff, case management, and needs to just get a hold of a council if they have questions about... As far as I know from what I was informed of yesterday, it's the president's request that I only speak with council members on issues relevant to the grant. So okay. the president is the grant signatory, so as the signatory, my understanding is that's the decision that's been made. So, I mean, obviously that's an internal decision. I'm not, you know, questioning that decision or saying anything about it. I'm just saying that that's what I have been requested to do, so I'm honoring that request. Okay. Well, thank you, Darren. You're welcome. That's and yeah, if you have other further questions, just, you know, go through a council member and let me know. We can set up a phone call or you transmit an email or, or what have you. Um, to the best of the knowledge of the people sitting in the room, are you going to be able to meet the deadline of, of getting in a, a formal response, or does there need to be a request for an extension? As long as Butch shows up today. If Butch shows up today, then yes. But if not, you're going to have to work through a council person to get through an extension. Okay. Are you here all day? Can the vice president sign? If, it's, if, if that person or that individual has been designated by the grant signatory who is the tribal president to do so, I have no problem with that. How does he designate? I mean, that's an internal decision. If it's done by, you know, a phone call or done by an email or done by however, I mean, that's a governance issue that I don't want to interfere okay, with the internal that, governance issues. We have that internally. And, yes, Mike okay. can be the signatory. So he's the vice president. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you, Darren. Thanks for You're your welcome. time. Okay. Take care. Have a good weekend. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Right,